allow us to detect what is occurring both outside and inside the body. Without receptors, we would be unable to respond to changes in the environment, and thus homeostasis could not be maintained. Some receptors, called extroreceptors, respond to stimuli that occur outside the body. Extroreceptors located in your ears, eyes, and skin allow you to sense information about the external environment. For example, photoreceptors within your retinas allow you to view this picture. There are also receptors within the body called enteroreceptors that allow us to detect internal stimuli. For example, receptors called baroreceptors within the aortic arch allow the body to detect changes in blood pressure. Other sets of receptors would allow us to detect the blood oxygen levels, pH, joint position, etc. Another method of classifying receptors is according to their modality, or the type of sensation that they produce via the nervous system. Receptors can produce a number of different sensations that may be either consciously or unconsciously perceived by the central nervous system. For example, as you watch this video, there are a number of different modalities that are active. You are seeing the images on the screen and hearing my voice narrating the slides. You may be warm or cold based on the temperature in the room. Here's a test without looking down. Can you tell me what position your feet are in? How do you know this? There are receptors called proprioceptors which are constantly monitoring the position and movement of your muscles, tendons, and joints. Unconsciously, your body may also be detecting a number of other things. Are your feet getting adequate oxygen supply in the current sitting position? Your body would be detecting the partial pressure of oxygen in your bloodstream. Have you eaten recently? The body would be monitoring your blood glucose levels. Are you stressed? Your body would be detecting changes in blood pressure. The amount of information constantly being produced by the body is staggering. Receptors may also be classified into six main types based on the type of stimulus they detect. Chemoreceptors detect chemicals in the body, such as oxygen in the bloodstream, odorants in the nose, or chemicals in the food you eat. Mechanoreceptors respond to the deformation, stretching, or bending of cells. For example, the baroreceptors that detect pressure in the aortic arch are mechanical receptors that respond to stretching of the arterial wall. Nociceptors are pain receptors that respond to noxious, potentially damaging stimuli. Nociceptors would be stimulated when physical or chemical damage to the body occurs. Osmoreceptors detect the osmotic pressures within the body. Osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus are responsible for detecting body fluid osmotic pressure and assist in the proper control of hydration in the body. Photoreceptors are the rods and cones in the retina of the eye which respond to light. And thermal receptors detect alterations in temperature and help assist in the regulation of core body temperature. Now that we know what the receptors are responding to, let's discuss how the receptors actually carry out this process. Microscopically, receptors may contain free or encapsulated dendritic nerve endings, or they may be separate cells that synapse with sensory neurons. We learned in the nervous system that neurons communicate through action potentials, which are all or none signals. The magnitude of an action potential is always the same. Neurons communicate intensity through changing the frequency with which action potentials are generated. A strong signal equals a rapid succession of action potentials. 
The dendrites, or separate receptor cells, however, do not produce action potentials. They instead produce what are called generator potentials. These are graded changes in the membrane potential of the receptor. For example, let's consider one of the mechanoreceptors in the skin responsible for the sensation of touch. If the skin is touched very lightly, this would produce a small change in the membrane potential of the mechanoreceptor. This might occur through a change in the membrane permeability to a specific type of ion. If this generator potential is of sufficient magnitude to reach threshold, an action potential will fire in the neuron's axon. If the skin is touched with a greater pressure, a large change in the membrane potential would occur. This would result in a higher frequency of action potentials in the neuronal axon. Once the receptors detect a signal, they must be able to communicate via action potentials with downstream control centers and effectors in order to maintain homeostasis. Thus, the nervous system has three main functions. A sensory function that detects the changes that are happening both inside and outside the body. This function is largely carried out by the receptors of the body. The sensory receptors convey messages to the system via sensory or afferent nerve fibers. The messages are transmitted by the use of action potentials through the neurons. Next, an integrative function analyzes the encumbering information, processes it by comparing it to previous experiences or to set points, and sends output to effectors. This process is usually carried out by the central nervous system in the brain or spinal cord. Motor or efferent fibers carry the signal via action potentials to effector organs or tissues that can respond to the original detected signal. The motor function responds to the stimuli with an action to correct or respond to the original signal. The functions of the nervous system often occur as a reflex arc. A reflex is an automatic sequence of events that occurs in response to a stimulus. A great analogy for a reflex arc can be found in a heating and cooling unit. A sensor within the thermostat is able to detect the ambient temperature in the room. This would be analogous to thermal receptors that could be found in the skin. The thermostat then compares the detected temperature with the set point established by the user. In the human body, this task would be accomplished by the hypothalamus, which is responsible for setting an appropriate range for temperatures. The thermostat then sends the signal to the HVAC unit, which in this case would turn the air conditioning on. The air conditioning is thus an effector for the system. In a human, if the core body temperature was too high, the nervous system would respond by increasing circulation through the superficial cutaneous circulation and through the formation of perspiration. Another example of a reflex arc found within the human body is the baroreceptor reflex. As we saw before, baroreceptors are mechanoreceptors that monitor blood pressure. These receptors are embedded in the walls of major blood vessels, primarily in the aortic arch and carotid sinus. Baroreceptors are embedded in the wall of the blood vessel and can be stretched as the blood vessel is exposed to increasing blood pressures and or blood volume. Afferent fibers from these receptors travel to the cardiovascular center. When the baroreceptors are stretched, they increase their frequency of action potentials sent to the cardiovascular center in the medulla. Within the medulla and pons, the cardiovascular center integrates information from the afferent fibers. There are three main centers within this region, the cardiac pressor center, the cardiac depressor center, and the vasoconstrictor center. 
efferent fibers then travel via the autonomic nervous system leading to the heart and blood vessels. The cardiovascular system initiates reflexes by increasing the parasympathetic drive and decreasing the sympathetic drive. The net effect of these actions is to decrease cardiac output, vasodilate the resistant blood vessels, and increase urine production. Consequently, the blood pressure will begin to drop and the baroreceptors will decrease their frequency of action potentials. Reflex arcs may be autonomic, such as the baroreceptor reflex we have just seen, which involves a division of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. Other reflex arcs, such as the knee-jerk reflex, a doctor may conduct during a physical, involve the somatic nervous system. The nervous system has many different divisions, each of which is responsible for carrying out different tasks in the body. The two main branches of the nervous system are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is comprised of the brain and spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system consists of all nervous tissue outside of the brain and spinal cord. The efferent pathways of the peripheral nervous system have three main divisions. The somatic nervous system innervates the skeletal muscle within the body and is under conscious control. This system would control any physical activity or exercise. The enteric nervous system controls the motility and secretions of the GI tract. This control is important for the proper digestion and absorption of nutrients in the body. The autonomic nervous system is responsible for the unconscious activities of the body. The efferent pathways of the autonomic nervous system travel to involuntary effectors such as smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. There are two different divisions of the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. If you would like to learn more about the autonomic nervous system, please view my upcoming video entitled The Autonomic Nervous System. Mm -hmm.